Sims and the heritage management. On the eve of the International Museum Day 2020, it started to back. On the theme of the workshop, Museum and the Anthropology, I have been to deliver an interactive talk on the topic museums and heritage management. At the outset, I'd like to define the word museum so that we could correlate its relevance and interrelationship with the, the heritage management. The word museum has its origin from the Greek word museon, which means abode of muses. The nine Greek goddesses concerned with the learning process. In short, we could say Museum is the abode of learning. In this way, museum occupies and do have a pivotal role in disseminating knowledge in the form of non-formal education through its wonderful collection of cultural heritage. By the word cultural heritage, what we mean is the materials and the knowledge which acquired by the members of a society and get transformed to the from one generation to the other. Let me repeat cultural heritage is dealing with the materials and knowledge that is acquired as a member of. A human society from one generation and it is it has been passed on to the next generation for posterity. We are, we, we are going to deal with the uh, main role of the museum as the uh, cultural institution which deals with the uh, collection of cultural heritage as well as which engages itself in the management of those cultural heritage materials and expressions. So in this way, we have to see two aspects of cultural heritage. The International Council of Museums, abbreviated as ICOM, has proposed during its 2004 convention which held at the Seoul of South Korea, much more attention has been given only to the tangible objects of culture, which shows the tangible cultural heritage. And the other side of the coin, namely the intangibility of the tangible cultural objects, have been ignored totally and thereby we are at the verge of losing the valuable knowledge associated with the cultural objects, the collection of museums. So the ICOM reiterated the significance of indulging in documenting simultaneously <laughs> Tangible culture, then only we 
could highlight or project the holistic view of the cultural heritage of the particular cultural group. And uh, before going into the details of what we are going to deal with the uh, Rodolf Museum and uh, the important role it, it plays on the manage, management of the cultural heritage, it's imperative to look into the history of the museum and the evolution of the modern museums. The museum has started its genesis from the Chitrasalas of local chief lines in the Indian scenario. The Chitrasalas are nothing but uh, the uh, collection of portraits, paintings, as well as the rare statues, images, jewelries, armed arms and armories, the collection of the local chieftains. Just to show the pride over the collection to the other group, they were maintaining such structures have been the first step in the genesis of, of museum. Then comes the curio home or the collection deposit in the private cabinets. The kings and emperors of Indian subcontinent were also continuing the tradition of acquisition and display of the rarest of rare antiquities in the collection in their collection so that uh, they could impress their friends as well as terrorize their enemies. So such curio homes or the private cabinets the second step in the evolution of modern museums. Then during the British Raj, the undivided India, they mooted the idea of establishing public galleries and museums. So, so far from the uh, history of museum movement, the museums are in the private belongings, and they, they have shown only to a select visitors that to show, to show their prestige and the other aspects. The British, they realized that the Indian culture should be projected, highlighted to the also to their own officials. So in, the, in this idea, they started the first museum at the present day Kolkata during 1814, the name of Indian Museum. The Indian Museum has been governed by a board of trustees till date. So the then Chairperson of the Board of Trustees of Indian Museum, Kolkata, wrote letters to the various provinces of the then Madras Presidency, include, including of the Nil Gris, seeking a local collection so that the cross section of Indian culture could be projected in a single place. We don't know how, how far and how much the other provinces reacted, but in the in the Nilgiris of Tamil Nadu, South India, the first collector of the district, James Wilkinson Briggs, he ordered his subordinate officials to explore and 
excavate the antiquities connected with the nail grease soil. Interestingly, they could amass a wealth of antiquities, not only megalithic uh, uh, antiquities, but also uh, historic uh, uh, period hero stones in and around the nail grease. In his uh, monograph, which he published during 1876, he brought out the entire documentation of the uh, sur surveyed uh, materials. And uh, he was hesitant to part all the collection to the Indian Museum authorities. And he only he sent a select collection of Daniel Grease to the Indian Museum, Kolkata. Incidentally, major collection were sent to the uh, then uh, Madras Central Museum, the present day government museum, Chennai, located at Igmo. So, such prestigious collections of Neil Greaves is, is named after the uh, first collector, J.W. Briggs, as the Briggs Collection. The Chennai Museum is having a number of prestigious collection in its uh, repository, uh, just like the Briggs Collection. And we are ha having the uh, Adi Chanur Collection. Adi Chanur Collections is interesting in the history of uh, uh, archaeological excavation, uh, I, would, I could say, because it is a uh, even, even before the uh, excavation carried out at the Indus Valley sites, namely Harappa and Mohenjo-daro, 12 years ago, the first excavation was uh, carried out at uh, Adish Nalur, uh, located at the Steve Angleton Taluk of the present day uh, Trinavali district of Tamil Nadu. So for the five consecutive summer vacations, the excavations were carried out and uh, the collections were sent to the Chennai Museum and they have been stored and uh, major, major collections have been also uh, presented to the public view, the name of Ayatollah collection or the Alexander Re collection of Ayatollah antiquities of megalithic period. Even I could say that uh, the Jalaj of India official uh, of the then British uh, Raj Robert Bruce Foot has identified the first two paleolists in and around the uh, Madras presidency, especially the uh, Madras uh, locale. Uh, first at the Pallavaram, which is uh, located uh, in the heart of Chennai today. Uh, the Pallavaram cantonment, uh, he could identify a single Cleaver, Paleolithic Cleaver. So by coming on the uh, coming details on the uh, having known the details of the uh, Cleaver identified by Robert Bruce Put, Pallavar at the Pallavaram site, uh, his um, subordinate official was uh, serving at the Atirambakam of present day Thiruvallur district, uh, Mr. King Jr. He reported to Put saying that there is a place called Gudiam and, the, and, uh, and there there is a, a cave, it's called Gudiam Caves. In this Gudiam Caves, the bed of the Gudiam Caves, a number of uh, Paleolithic uh, tool like structures are available. So Put visited and uh, along with uh, King Junior who declared that they are the hand axe. The other hand axes identified in India were resembling this uh, hand axe of Atrambakam. That's why he was able to name the uh, site as the Madrasian hand axe industry. That means that he he was able to say that the entire Gudium cave 
he is the then habitation site of the Paleolithic man of uh, uh, Indian subcontinent. And uh, these collections of Robert Bruce Poot have been deposited at the Chennai Museum and they have been labeled as the food collections of Tamil Nadu. Incidentally, not only uh, prehistoric collections, but also ethnographic, ethnographic collections also uh, made at the Chennai Museum by the Sarvars like uh, Edgar Thurston, who is the author of uh, seven volumes of the uh, famous uh, caste and tribes of Southern India. Then the Chennai Museum, which was started as a second museum next to the Indian Museum Calcutta during 1851, became the cradle of anthropology, I could say, because of the uh, collection of Robert Bruce, Bruce Wood stone tools, because of the collections of uh, bricks, megalithic nilgiri, nilgiri antiquities, because of the collection of first excavated site of Alchulur megalithic collections and the program collections uh, carried out, acquired by uh, Edgar Thurston. Following Edgar Thurston also, Professor A.I.F.N., he served in the Chennai Museum for the decades and he was also able to concentrate on the whole of uh, then Madras Presidency, that is uh, Today's uh, undivided Andhra Pradesh, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka, and part of Maharashtra he was able to collect not only Paleolithic, uh, I mean, not only the prehistoric materials, but also cultural, ethnographic items, starting with uh, tribal societies and uh, folk societies. I, I could say a, a single example to to show the magnanimity, uh, I mean, the, the majestic uh, outlook of the Chennai Museum. You might have uh, heard about the human sacrifice uh, and the um, Kond rebellion, the British Raj. Kond tribes are one of the Central Indian tribes occupying the present day Odisha state, the Niamagiri Hills. Uh, Valiguda and other places. They were conducting human sacrifice just to appease the earth deity on the imitative magic so that uh, uh, bumper yield of turmeric could be achieved to the earth deity. So such sacrifice is called Miriya sacrifice and uh, the uh, British force, just in the name of controlling or suppressing the human sacrifice, they conquered the land of owned motherland and destroyed all the human sacrificial force called Mary, Maria sacrificial force. And they were reserving only one specimen for the history to remember. There, there was a human sacrifice carried out at the uh, Gondistan and they have sent the, that uh, material, that um, ethnographic material in the Maria Sacrament Post to the Chennai Museum. I could say that this is one of the prestigious items of the Chennai Museum. Then coming to the uh, next level of uh, evolution of museum, you can see the Modern museums which have been established by the independent of India, by the India attaining the independence from the British colonial power. Having realized the importance of museum as the institution which could educate the general public of all walks of life through its collection, that is acquisition, 
and uh, presenting that is displaying to the public after thorough documentation and and the conservation then bringing about bringing out research publications starting with the simple pamphlets to be detailed the monograph or catalog particular theme of the presentation the last and the most important functions of modern museum is expected is to educate the general public or the museum visitors by maintaining a very good public relationship museums serve to the general public on both ways that is by enrich programs as well as outreach programs enrich programs we mean people coming to the museum and the museum provides a very good presentation with its sizable collection of antiquities and other cultural uh, heritage materials with a minimum or adequate documentation mm -hmm. in, the, in the form of uh, descriptive labels other uh, accessories so such uh, modern day galleries and museums either they could be in the galleries the museum could be modern museum could be in the galleries recently quite recently that means that um, uh, after the gallery museums uh, people wanted to showcase the cultural heritage by uh, in open air space as open air museums till two decades back the indira gandhi rashtriya manav sangrahalaya located at bhopal chamla hills was having only the open air museums only after realizing uh, importance of gallery and uh, and uh, display of uh, the uh, ethnographic materials in closed cabinets and uh, galleries they was able to organize different galleries in a modern museum the first gallery should be on the orientation or introduction is the main focal theme of the museum collection the first and foremost gallery of a modern museum is the orientation gallery or the introductory gallery this gallery will give you a glimpse of the entire collection of the particular museum then comes the other gallery as i told you that the modern museums are expected to concentrate on seven major functions starting with the acquisition or collection preservation restoration and conservation documentation presentation publication research and publication and finally education and publication the modern museums role in did not end with these uh, seven major functions the modern museums are expected to uh, expected to indulge also in five important added functions namely ensuring safety and security so we have to ensure safety and security of the collections so that uh, the cultural heritage is carried forth to the coming up generation and the people then comes the indulging in solvage the case of in, the, the, in um, uh, disaster period like a deluge or a fire uh, accidents the 
cultural heritage material should be revamped and uh, uh, protected from the uh, permanent loss. So such a step is called salvage. And then during the British Raj, Raj and uh, uh, a number of uh, um, cultural heritage materials have been uh, reported to various alien soils. Say, for example, uh, the uh, British Raj, they have right trial, uh, on right trial claim, they have, uh, have our Indian antiquities at, the, at their Victoria Albert Museum and also at the British Museum. Victoria Albert Museum is having a section called Indian, Col Indian Collection, mm -hmm. section of Indian Collection. They were they were unaware of the importance, the cultural importance of the of those collections. What they do is that they engage Indian scholars to do research on those collections. And the reports, research reports of the scholars, Indian scholars, they were able to unravel the cultural significance of those of their collections. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, I, I could uh, add uh, one more uh, dimension on the uh, importance of uh, repatriation of uh, Indian antiquities from foreign soil. Uh, uh, the Erod district of uh, present Tamil Nadu, uh, a CSC missionary person called uh, Prof. He is a physician by profession, and uh, he was uh, touring uh, in and around the uh, Erode uh, district. And he was able to collect, uh, he was able to serve the people with his uh, medical knowledge. And for uh, as a gratitude, uh, a token of their uh, thanks, thanksgiving, uh, the general public were giving the various antiquities in their personal collection. So on, on his return to his uh, Native soil, Australia, Bruff carried away all the all those materials. The grand great grandson of uh, Bruff, they were kind enough to repatriate those things. And uh, the sincere efforts of Mr. Vinod Daniel, who served in the Canberra Museum of Australia, is uh, uh, Tamil by birth uh, and is settled in Canberra. Uh, with, uh, with the good office of uh, uh, Vinod Daniel and the Australian High Commission, we were able to get back those brief collections to Chennai Museum. Even nowadays, the developed countries also realize the importance of uh, giving back the uh, as, uh, such uh, cultural heritage materials to the uh, original homeland. And they are honoring the request of the native people who are repatriating those antiquities. So repatriate comes as the added function of modern museums. As I told you that, uh, uh, like uh, salvage, <laughs> even during disaster management, so planning the strategies for disaster management, like fire drilling, how to rescue uh, the antiquities from the uh, accidental uh, fire. Uh, is happening uh, and uh, just like uh, uh, the first situations. So trainings were, have been imparted to the general public as well as the uh, curator staff of the modern museums in the mitigation of the disaster. Then comes an important uh, role, one more important role of the modern museum that is authentication of art objects. So our, our, our cultural heritage materials have been uh, either taken by the foreign nationals, either uh, clandestine, uh, illegally, what we call the illicit trafficking of the cultural materials. So on, uh, uh, on reacquiring the illicit, uh, illicit uh, traffic materials, from the foreign nation, foreign soil, uh, we have to show our authenticity of that particular object or particular 
antiquity. So mm -hmm. one, one such type is called fingerprinting technology, especially for the bronzes, what we call the Panjaloha uh, The bronze images were during the acquisition stage itself were fingerprinted. Just they will be sent through the X-ray technique, and uh, the collection will be. Uh, the the X-ray will reveal the some defects or some hollow, some hole, or some crack, my minute crack, which is uh, unobtrusive to the naked eye. Such will be recorded along with the material. Our access and register concern. Then, uh, during the time of reclaiming our material, so if our uh, uh, fingerprinting uh, details uh, in, uh, is uh, our uh, synchronizing with the, uh, with the antiquity, which is once again subjected for fingerprinting, then uh, we, can, we can claim claim back the material. So, uh, such authentication of the objects is uh, one more function, major function carried out the organizations. As I told you that the modern museum's role is uh, uh, not only serving the public by its uh, presentation with, with the, with the uh, collection, their collection, but also they should educate the public on the two aspects of culture, cultural heritage. Cultural heritage would be dichotomous into two aspects, namely tangible cultural heritage, shortly abbreviated as TCH. The other one is the intangible cultural heritage, abbreviated as ICH. TCH is the cultural heritage concerned with the tangible objects of culture. So that is the artifacts, ethnographic materials, the collection of a particular museum forms the first part of the cultural heritage, namely DCH, the tangible cultural heritage. Then comes the intangible cultural heritage, the knowledge, the cultural significance of those cultural heritage materials so that's why, as I told you in the beginning of the talk, that uh, the 2004 Convention of ICOM held at the CEO of South Korea insisted uh, that hereafter, ICH should also be documented simultaneously, and both TCH and ICH should be projected so as to unravel the holistic picture of the antiquity or the cultural material concern. So the day by day, the modern museum's role is getting uh, a sea change and uh, put it in short, would say that the museum has traveled from its uh, primary role as a curio home at the beginning to repository or storehouse of tangible cultural heritage objects and presently is uh, indulging in heritage management. We could appreciate the significance of cultural heritage or the scope of cultural heritage. I would like to quote one of the famous uh, museologists of uh, one period. Cultural heritage is not something held, frozen, or stored away, but rather something living, vital, and connected to the identity and spirit of contemporary people who are trying their way in a complicated world of today. So, once again, I would like to uh, re emphasize that cultural heritage is not. Dead, it is living, it is not frozen, it is vital, it is not stored away, it is connected to the identity and the of the contemporary people. 
by the word contemporary people i would like to redefine the modern museum saying that museums were once conceived as repository of antiquity or repository of curious curious objects rather now they not only function as a storehouse of the antiquities but also the contemporary ethnographic materials also say for example tribal artifacts artifacts folk artifacts artifacts of the contemporary period also occupies the main place within the modern museums as i told you that though we have uh, framed our topic of the place deliberation as the museums and heritage management i i, I would like to restrict only to the cultural heritage management uh, at the same time i would like to say that uh, the uh, by, by by the term heritage or the one sort of heritage could be three of three fold in nature namely natural heritage cultural heritage and scientific so the zoological uh, geological and uh, uh, botanical uh, specimens forms the natural heritage materials whereas the uh, scientific knowledge the objects associated with the, uh, our contemporary people as well as the our societies as to the the third aspect of heritage in the scientific so as the uh, as, as the anthropology is dealing with uh, uh, cultural heritage not to restrict myself to the domain of cultural heritage only leaving the other two aspects only natural heritage and scientific India be proud saying that it's a, a nation of having wealth of cultural heritage. As I told you the history of uh, uh, Indian, I mean Chennai Museum collection or Indian Museum collection. We come across certain interesting uh, happenings. Say, for example, one Mr. Jagor of uh, Germany. He came during the British Raj. He traveled as a uh, freelancer. The name of the, the disguise of uh, uh, a tourist or tourist. He visited uh, all parts of India, including the southern part of India, especially Tamil Nadu. Also, uh, say for example, he amassed a, a collection of uh, archaeological antiquities. That only really prompted the British Raj. Uh, uh, awaken themselves uh, towards Aichanur uh, site and uh, then only they started their in unearthing of Aichanur site, Velvet site. Also, Jahor uh, visited Nail, Nail Greece. Uh, uh, Jahor uh, 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 deposited his uh, collection of megalithic Nail Greece to the uh, Folk Museum of Berlin. Dr. Gundi, the name of uh, the Berlin Folklore Museum. Uh, and there, we are having the megalithic Nilgiri collection as well. When I have taken my uh, one of my research studies uh, on the megalithic uh, Nilgiris, I prompted uh, to you know, unravel the holistic uh, picture of the megalithic Nilgiris. I was able to have uh, able to have a glimpse of the uh, British Museum collection on the Megalithic Nail Greece, and also Jahor collection deposited at the Berlin Folklore Museum through uh, one of one of the articles by a famous uh, German archaeologist. So in my study, I not only uh, 
uh, made a detailed study on the collection of uh, Chennai Museum megalithic nail grease antiquities. Uh, also, uh, as a secondary source, a secondary information from published articles, German archaeologists, I was able to bring out a monograph on the decorated pottery lids of uh, megalithic nail grease. And uh, by seeing this publication, the, recently uh, one of the consultant curator of uh, the Victor Albert Museum, she volunteered her, herself to restudy the megalithic nail grease, and uh, she made a visit to Chennai Museum for the proper soil, namely the nail grease. Mm -hmm. so, I am saying this details, you know, that uh, not only uh, uh, the cultural heritage has been dealt with uh, since the local details, incense, but also British Raj, and the tradition continues even today uh, by, by our own efforts. There are a number of uh, acts governing the Cultural Heritage Management. Let me uh, give you a short note on these uh, acts. Uh, the first and foremost act I, I, I could say is the uh, Indian Treasure Trove Act, 1878. Since 1878, it got been uh, re-notified and uh, there have been a lot of additions and uh, elaborations. Despite that, the basic uh, Indian Treasure Tract 1878 uh, serves the main purpose of dealing with the uh, treasure uh, material unearthed accidentally from the mother soil or the underwater substratum. Uh, the basic uh, idea of the Indian Treasure Tract is anything uh, uh, available unearthed below the uh, substratum soil or the water body. Uh, 10 feet belongs to the government or the individual or the owner of the site or the scale. As per this act, all materials unearthed from the other soil and the underwater bodies will be acquired by the museum. The British people, they framed the acts in such a way that uh, uh, the excavation should be carried out by the ASI, that is Archives of India, and they should be deposit, deposited to the Chennai Museum. So, museum is the uh, repository and, uh, and, and, and the public uh, projection place for those excavated items. That is the idea. So, till date, excavation could be done only by the uh, Department of Archaeology, both central and state, but not by the museum. Whereas the treasure materials should not be handled by the state and central government, as well, they are the properties of state museum concern. So, till date, we are following this uh, treasure tract faithfully. And that's why uh, I, I could say that an interesting code of copper antenna swords have been unearthed in three different or uh, four different periods. Uh, in uh, three to four different sites of Tamil Nadu. They are called copper antennae swords. Normally, the hilt of, hilt of the sword will be pointed one. Whereas, in this particular type of swords, copper, uh, copper swords, the hilt will be bifurcated as, uh, to, look like, to look like the antennae of an insect. That's why they are called antennae swords. The antennae swords have Got its got, got their genesis during the Chalkalic period, namely just Valley Civilization, and disappeared in the same in this Valley Civilization period. That means that if you come across a, a copper antenna sword for vicinity, you could probably say that this particular site is having some connection with uh, the Indus Valley Civilization. You, we think that uh, uh, our South India is uh, far off uh, from the Indus Valley site, or Indian subcontinent is, I mean, India, uh, our, uh, even India is uh, 
far off from the undivided uh, India in choose of the Pakistan. Still, we are having the Indus Valley connection, uh, starting with the Kalibangan and Lothal of uh, North India to the, the tip of uh, Tamil Nadu. Say, for example, as I told you, the corporate networks have been first identified uh, as a single find while uh, the government is indulging in laying a road at uh, Savani Patti, present day Swagangi district of Tamil was the first corporate network and, near, and it has been acquired to the deposit to the Chennai Museum as per the Indian Treasure Act. In 2000, at the Apukal Cave of the Velour district, Velour district, Velour town of Velour district, eight co such corporate networks have been unearthed, identified, and uh, given to the Velour district museum. Interestingly, while I was serving at the uh, Kaimathur district museum, in the consecutive, I mean, um, subsequent years, 2001, I was able to identify and uh, have in the collection 10 such corporate newsfers from one particular site called Anamalagi. Kallangutti Karadu is the stone quarry located the Anamalai of Ulachi Taluk, Tamil. So, as per this Treasure Tract, all the 10 operand rare country of Amtran words have been given to the district museum. So, that is the importance of the uh, in the Treasure Tract. Then comes the Ancient Monuments Preservation Act 1904. It got uh, ratified as Antiquities Export and Control Act 1947. And uh, once again, is uh, re notified with uh, possible inclusions and uh, expansions as ancient historical monuments, archaeological si sites, and remains declaration. Of national important act 1951. So during the British period, the Indian Treasure Act has been put out. Then uh, the Ancient Monument Preservation Act, the Ancient Monument Preservation Act, voted by the British Raj during 1904, got uh, ratified and re ratified twice. And uh, now we are having our 1958 Act called Ancient Monuments, Archaeologic Sites and Remains. Till date, we are following this one. Uh, as per this act, in any site or any monument or even a single heritage, cultural heritage material should be, should not be possessed by public, should be, and private parties should be handed out to the public institution, the nearest museum. Then comes the interesting act called uh, Arms and Ammunition Act. Just to curtail the illicit trafficking of the arms and ammunition, and also to curtail the extremism or the terrorism, the arms and ammunition have been confiscated from the owner of those. Uh, I would like to add an interesting note uh, as my during my at uh, Government Museum E Road. Uh, one fine uh, court note, one of the police official came here, yeah, unexploded bomb, bomb shell. And they handed over to me with a letter from the authority, police, police authority. Uh, and I, then I advised him that it has not been, uh, they should uh, verify the nature of unexploded material. Uh, it is safe. It, it won't uh, explode uh, in the future. They should uh, 
approach the ballistic authorities at uh, Chennai, they should get a certificate and uh, quiz them. Uh, however, I don't want to part with that rare uh, item because it, uh, um, so it, it is uh, it is reflecting the nostalgia of uh, uh, Tipu versus British uh, conflict, particular locality. I mean, Satya Mangalam, Shiger in the region. STR, District of Tamil. So still, and having it in a election and uh, during my period was uh, put in the public display i don't know the present condition uh, so such is the importance of the arms and ammunition act uh, to curtail the movement of illicit movement of arms and ammunition arms and ammunition as well as the curtailing the extreme extremism terrorism free india then comes an, uh, uh, one more in, interesting act called Antiquities and Art Treasure Act 1972. As this act, even a single stone image which is uh, not in worship or which is uh, abandoned, uh, they can be uh, collected either by the site museum of, of the local area or by the uh, district museum, which comes under the government of India. So with these acts, help us in fine-tuning the cultural heritage management strategies. I like to project some of the cultural institutions associated with the management of cultural heritage. The Institutions associated with cultural heritage management could be dichotomized into two as national level institutions and state level institutions. I would say that under the uh, national level institution, ASI and ANSC comes. Archaeology of India was the oldest institution. Anthropology was uh, governed as a department of anthropology as part of the Indian Museum, Calcutta. Only at the later period, the Department of Museum of Indian Museum has uh, made a leap as the present day anthropology therapy. So both the ASI and the ANSI, they are the national level institution dealing with the cultural heritage management. Then, the site museums governed by both the central as well as the state governments also helps in the management of the cultural heritage. The multi-purpose museums such as Indian Museum Calcutta, first foremost continent, the second oldest museum of Indian subcontinent, our Chennai Museum, are uh, two extraordinary uh, examples to codify the table of multi-purpose or multi-subject means uh, this is not a specialist museum or a single subject museum in dealing with all subjects say for example zoology section policy section, botany section, geology section, uh, chemical conservation section under the scientific science means then under the art and uh, archaeology we are having art, art section archaeology section, anthropology section and then we are having education section also. So that's why we call these uh, museums, Indian Museum Calcutta and the Chennai Museum, museums. The Solaji Museum of Hyderabad could also be named as the multi purpose or multi subject museums because it's not only dealing with the uh, archaeological materials but also the art uh, materials. What connoisseurs should visit the Solaging Museum? It is uh, one of the significant important museums of uh, Indian nation because uh, it is uh, it, uh, the entire collections are worn by a single individual called Jung. Uh, it is a mammoth collection. You, you cannot uh, pass on uh, to the 
uh, from one gallery to another gallery without uh, cutting across the second or third gallery like that. Even if you don't want to see the gallery, you have to pass only through the first gallery to second gallery, second gallery to third gallery like that. So they, they have made in such a way, se sequencing the gallery, they made a fine flow of the sisters. They should not miss the idea, the main idea is they should not be, miss the collections, miss the presentation as well. I would like to say that there are certain organizations associated with the heritage management, especially cultural heritage management. At the national level, we are having INTAG and the MEI. INTAG, you, you know that the National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage it was started by the then Prime Minister of India, Mrs. Indira Gandhi. And the mammoth responsibility was handed over to Mrs. Pupul Jayagar, the famous art historian of Indian soil. So, with a team of uh, Mrs. Indira Gandhi and uh, Pupul Jayagar, uh, the organization INTAC, INTAG, was formulated. INTAG was, uh, is having a uh, number of regional chapters, even our Coimbatore is having a Coimbatore regional chapter, Erode is having a regional chapter, Chennai is having a regional chapter, like that we are having a number of regional chapters. I would suggest our friends who are listening this uh, lecture uh, to go and identify the tag your area and associate yourself with the function uh, works because it's a non-profit making organism, just like museum. Museum is defined as a, a, an institution, a non-profit non institution, uh, serve the general public for a, the entertainment as a non-profit making organism. So intact is also a non-profit making organism. And uh, it will be a very good service to serve our other country, the associate with the tag chapter. There is another association called uh, organization called MEI, Museum Association of India. It's, the, uh, it's an association of uh, Indian museologists. Anybody can be the museologist, members of this MEI. So, you not be a museologist. Even a layman is having some interest for cultural heritage. They could be the member, they could participate, even they could present uh, papers. Uh, such a democratic setup is the MEI, Museum of Social Media. At the international level, we are having two organizations, uh, those who are saying that UNESCO and ICOM, International Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, is governing all these cultural Activities. Even ICOM, International Council of Museum, ICOM, is uh, associating with UNESCO. And every year, ICOM is uh, formulating a theme for the International Year Museum Day. As you know very well, that today, this uh, International Museum Day 2020 is on the museums for equality, diversity and inclusion. So, uh, this reflects our anthropological uh, discipline, which uh, emphasizes on equality for all cultural groups. For anthropology, uh, no man is, uh, man, I mean, cultural group is superior, or no cultural group is inferior. Everybody is equal. So, this, this is the uh, emphasis in this present in theme. Museums for equality, diversity, and inclusion. And uh, we are coming across the third uh, category of uh, organizations which deal with cultural heritage management. They are para museums, it's parallel museums. They are neither museums of uh, national level 
or uh, cultural institutions of international and international level. Uh, rather, they are also just like uh, intact, out and out by the public I mean, participation, uh, cultural statement. We have heard about uh, friends of museum, like friends of police. Uh, having friends, friends of museum in parlance of theology, what are museums? So you could be the uh, member of your local museum, and if they are having bit of their famous friends of museum, and uh, you could organize the museum clubs in your own institution, even if you are a, a lion or rotarian, uh, you could have a small wing of. Uh, uh, your organization among museum clubs. The club can be organized by anybody. Then you could have museum uh, or fostering museum or highlighting the museum movement of India. Likewise, we are having heritage clubs also. You could form a heritage club. When uh, uh, Ms. Mrs. Gariali IAS mm -hmm. of uh, uh, Tamil Nadu Cadre, the then uh, Secretary for Art, Art and Culture, Government of Tamil Nadu. She uh, was instrumental in forming, framing a, a, a club called the District Art Club. He was giving uh, seed money to the to all the districts of that period. Still, such. A, uh, I mean, uh, art and cultural clubs are, are serving their, doing their yeoman service to the community. Uh, also linking the art canoes here, the institution like me. So, so as I told you that uh, either we can uh, associate ourselves with INTAC or MAI, Museum of Social India, or ICOM, National Council of Museum. As I told you, that I like just like the MEI, Museum of Social Media, the ICOM, International Council of Museum, is having its head uh, at Paris, France, uh, is also open to all public, may not be a museology, not be a museographer. You could be, you could enroll yourself as a member, and uh, you could be uh, part and parcel of carrying the torch of cultural heritage. I would like to conclude my uh, talk by highlighting certain days or days to be remembered in connection with the cultural management, cultural heritage management. April 18th is uh, declared as the International Heritage Day by the UNESCO. Uh, during uh, last year, uh, I mean, the, the person, uh, this this uh, April 18th, 2020, not able to also associate ourselves with uh, Professor Burana uh, and his outbreak. Whereas last year, he was able to deliver a special lecture at the Tamil University, Tanjavu, over Tamil. And May 18th is our International Museum Day. That's also declared by UNESCO. August 9th is conceived as the International Indigenous Peoples Day. By the, the term Indigenous People, we would like to honor the autochthonous people of Indian subcontinent, as far as India is concerned. In the same way, throughout the world, at the global level, uh, the indigenous people are honored and they are identified, their contribution is identified. As I told you that uh, I would, uh, uh, email, again is that uh, uh, the, the premier or the president of uh, USA or uh, other countries are making public apology to the indigenous people, saying that we have dishonored our status. Such a deliberation, such a 
open confessions are uh, in possible because of uh, the declaration of August 9th as religious people day and uh, there is one uh, week is devoted to the observance of national heritage week that is november 19 to 22 so you could think of these days and uh, 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 time uh, to associate yourself to contribute your a service the conservation of cultural freedom and heritage management as a concluding remark i like to reiterate saying that it may be uh, the museums uh, maybe uh, they have started the journey as a, a curio home then uh, as a storehouse or the repository of antiquities but a recent scenario the modern museums the modern museums thus the serving as the bridge between the uh, past the present and marching towards the future and also linking the nature culture and scientific temperaments and the people of all walks of life we may think that what is the significance of what is the importance to uh, managing the cultural heritage or is the cultural heritage management is necessary the cultural heritage is the wealth of the nation particular nation is a proud for the existence of the people as a cultural group and only if we know our past story we can march towards the still further what we call the enviable achievement the near future so we should know our cultural heritage we should honor our cultural heritage we should contribute is something in managing the cultural heritage these words i like to conclude my talk as i told you uh, 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 that uh, it is not the role of here visualist or here anthropologist it is the role of of each and every individual in citizen to contribute their might management of cultural heritage so i like to have their queries doubts and even clarification sometimes sometimes i may be uh, missed the certain things to highlight it or have uh, any uh, statement which is uh, being counted to our eighth and uh, knowledge uh, i would like to clarify also thank you i would like to uh, thank general secretary mr ramudha valluvan of aspire and other members of the session giving me the opportunity to deliver my talk on this particular topic on the eve of the international museum thank you thank you so much sir we are all delighted to have you here and uh, thank you for sharing your understanding and skills with us i hope everybody has gained immense from you and now i will open the floor for the questions please if you have any queries or any kind of discussions you please speak mute uh, unmute yourself and you can ask pooja kumari you you have a query can you please ask him able to see only the compliments i would like to tell you <laughs> sir so she has a query that after completing msc can the people get recruited uh, in the museum what 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 is what is
episode will be that after completing the MSc means MSc in archaeology or in anthropology, uh, is there any uh, chance or any eligibility criteria for getting recruited in the museum? Actually, uh, he has uh, been commended me to a particular uh, uh, point based in my deliberation. And, uh, recently, there are certain institutions uh, there is concentrating on the heritage management. The private, I mean, uh, Interprasa University, under the Inter Interprasa University, uh, there is the Institute of uh, Heritage Management. Is located in the Kudipna Road, at the outskirts of Delhi. Uh, they are offering postgraduate uh, course on the heritage management. It's an excellent course, and uh, uh, with your uh, uh, degree in um, anthropology or uh, archaeology or some subject related with uh, uh, the cultural heritage, if you are having this uh, added uh, postgraduation. Uh, you will be the better option for a better candidate for the selection of curatorial service. Uh, the, the curatorial staff pattern is need of uh, young people to carry on the torch to the posterity. So, the, so the, even the museums are offering certain in-service courses. Chennai Museum is offering uh, one uh, one month uh, one month long course on conservation of uh, care care of museum objects care of museum objects that is uh, uh, usually carried out by during the summer vacation so uh, without uh, I mean um, in uh, wasting our precious academic time even during our vacation and even as a when, uh, the graduation level or postgraduate level or the, the employee PhD level. Uh, you could uh, enroll for this course. See, it, is, it gives a thorough uh, understanding of the, as I told you, that uh, the second important function preservation and uh, restoration and total conservation of the heritage material. Hands on training. And also, then and there, uh, the museum is offering training programs uh, and workshops also. Uh, we had uh, Friends of Museum, now it is uh, not, not operated in Chennai Museum. And Friends of Museum will be uh, having uh, a hosting or will be uh, joined with the museum authorities. And uh, we used to give training to them and they used to uh, extend uh, our service to the local uh, educational institutions. Like that, uh, if you are enriching your paper qualification, academic qualification, uh, Simple graduation or post graduation, but having this type of practical courses uh, that will be added, uh, in, that will be uh, that will enrich your CV, such as curriculum vitae. And uh, the National Museum New Delhi, uh, under the MHRD of the Department of the Culture, they are offering post graduation in uh, May. They are offering two courses MA Physiology. Uh, and uh, then the MSc conservation they are offering. So you could, you, you could uh, either choose one, one of these uh, two subjects, uh, uh, one of these subjects, and uh, you, could, uh, post, you could do post graduation after uh, post graduation, you could enroll for MPhil and also PhD. Uh, during 1990s, art history was the thrust area for these history people. Then came the tourism management. Present uh, thrust area is the heritage. So I will, I will suggest um, youngsters to enroll themselves uh, for uh, PG or post PG or uh, direct MPhil or PhD courses either to uh, the heritage Institute of Heritage Management uh, located at uh, uh, thrust area, which comes under the Indraprastha University. And also, National uh, Museum is deemed university to be enrolled there for the post graduation course, either on the general museology or on the conservation side. Could uh, could be uh, could be the right path for.
As I told you that uh, Indian Museum uh, and then uh, are having a beautiful collection in antiquity. They are need need of exports in exports cultural heritage in India to do research. They are very generous in grant. Even Simpson Institute uh, choose our path entering museum. Institutional like this is institution of USA or uh, our window, Daniel of Kanyaburi district, Abdul Hadu, uh, where studying in the Canberra University, I mean, National Museum of Canberra, Australia. And this support, we were able to recreate the collection to Chennai Bank. So the next question is by Vijay Shri. She is asking, how do we involve stakeholders from local communities while building ethnographic collections in museums? How do we? How do we involve stakeholders from yes, local please, communities? How do we involve stakeholders from local communities while building ethnographic collections? Are you hearing me? Please repeat the question. Sir, uh, I am. Am I audible? Okay, fine, fine. fine. Actually, uh, uh, and I was working in the Nil Greece. I was uh, able to have uh, win over the heart of the local stakeholders, especially the indigenous people, tribal people. Uh, Nil Greece. Uh, say, for example, uh, the intangible cultural heritage of the Aul Kurumbas is the graphic tradition. So the, their answer. Were uh, uh, observe, observing uh, magic religious practices, which, which comes after the secret ceremony, and uh, uh, nobody is allowed to see, see that particular secret ceremony. But because of that uh, intangible cultural heritage of graphic art tradition, we are able to uh, make them to make drawings of those actual observance, and we were able to. Add our ethnographic uh, description as an indirect method, and also uh, uh, by, as, as I told you that uh, what we call the action anthropological approach or the method, we could, we, we could do the participant observation uh, contribution with the stakeholders, and that will enrich our, our ethnographic collection, no doubt. Uh, I was uh, uh, transferred to uh, Uti Museum as a punishment transfer by the state government during 2000, I mean 1994, as I con conferred with the local official. Uh, I took it as a challenge. I, 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 I told myself that uh, I should surpass the Madras Museum Anthropology Collection by having uh, a contact with the local people. And I was able to uh, have a minimum monthly collection, uh, starting with uh, one object, uh, one artifact to 15 artifacts. So I, I made a drive by myself saying that uh, under the UK concept called Exhibit of the Month program, uh, I, will, I, I will go for new new collection by uh, sitting with the indigenous people. Uh, and they will give the, uh, one particular item or some item, and then I will say select a particular item, a cultural item, and they'll exhibit as here, exhibit of the month. So, such a way I was able to identify that a particular uh, long fruit of bamboo is available among 
four different indigenous communities will exist. For example, Thodas are having Bugri, uh, the same Bugri in a different uh, contour and uh, performing method. Uh, Alukurmas are having likewise uh, the uh, uh, non-tribal Madugas. They are having like that. I was able to identify different kinds of Bugri. So definitely our approach uh, with the local uh, stakeholders will definitely win over the heart to enrich our ethnographic collection. No doubt. Say, for example, I, I, I will like to quote one more example, one more incident. Uh, actually, uh, you know that uh, in the Nil Greece, there is one of the regional tribal communities called Kothas. They are artisan tribes. Women, women folk of Kothas are excellent potters. Uh, annually, once in a year, uh, they use they, they will start the pottery by offering the first uh, pottery collection to their deity, Amnor, Ainor, or means the mother deity, Ainor, father deity. Uh, they are having answers, Ainor. Uh, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are having two different uh, shrines for them but located side by side uh, the women folk will collect the clay process the clay they make the pottery and they bake it and they offer it to the uh, deity Kambatrayan uh, Kambatrayi or Kambatishwari uh, Kambatan Kambata means uh, kiln the furnace he, is, he himself is Vishwakarma. Competent is the, the principal deity. Uh, himself is a Vishwakarma, tribal Vishwakarma. And uh, uh, it is also observed as a sacred ceremony. Nobody is allowed. Uh, whereas uh, the local NGO called Keystone Foundation, they talk with the people, uh, stakeholders, and they explained that. And then they handed over the videograph and photographic equipments to the people with instruction how to handle it. Uh, and with uh, uh, the photography and videograph by the tribal themselves, uh, was able to Anil Pandey, who came and researched on the Kota pottery, was able to document the Kota pottery making. As I told you, Kota pot is the uh, TCH, tangible cultural heritage, whereas Kota party, that is pottery making of Kota, is the ICH, tangible cultural heritage. Both TCH and ICH was documented beautifully by Anil Pandey of uh, uh, Eastern Foundation by winning over the stakeholders, namely the Kota tribes. So, in continuation with this, uh, one of them has asked that if we are uh, studying the material resources. So how could we uh, study this uh, social and cultural practices which are associated with the natural resource, resources such as land, water, uh, and which is regarded or considered as tra traditional or local knowledge. So we can uh, also study these social and cultural things uh, as cultural resources means how we can go with the study of these cultural resources. Fine, fine. Actually, the 2004 uh, ICOM convention uh, has advocated certain basic uh, strategies. Uh, the uh, studying the endangered culture, uh, endangered language, the linguists are uh, redesignating designate, the native people as the language consultant. Consultant instead of the uh, earlier uh, term informant, now they are using the term language consultant because they are they are the, the resource of language, native language, and they are the consultant themselves. Like, likewise, uh, uh, the uh, stakeholders, the indigenous people, are identified as the living treasures of culture or cultural heritage. Living treasures. They have been named as living clusters. So we should identify uh, the stakeholders who are having excellent knowledge of the traditional knowledge system and uh, their knowledge should be 
will pass pass to the younger generation uh, as a prestigious uh, cultural domain uh, in such a way i, I will say that uh, as i told you that keystone foundation came as an ngo to survey the any collection practice practices held in and around the nilgiri biosphere reserve nilgiri biosphere reserve covers not only uh, nilgiri of tamil nadu but also bandipur of karnataka and uh, nagarvale of uh, kerala collecting all the three states interconnected states by seeing the uh, uh, wealth of uh, traditional knowledge system on the uh, honey harvesting they established themselves as the procedures for the stakeholders of entire nilgiri tribal community and they are the uh, present presently they are the uh, powerful uh, ngo the ngo people of uh, 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 incidentally today is the international honey bee day 20th of uh, may is considered as the international honey bee day so uh, the alukurumbas of uh, kunnur and kothagiri area of nilgiris uh, are indulging in honey harvesting it's uh, giving minimum disturbance in intervention to the uh, honey colony honey bee colony and they are harvesting uh, in a sustainable manner uh, uh, by employing different kinds of uh, honey trapping by making use of the indigenous uh, wild wild choir ladder uh, and then uh, wild bamboo ladder like that uh, all this traditional knowledge system could be studied uh, i mean uh, um, even though it is an ngo i am having much uh, much appreciation towards the work and contribution of uh, the eastern foundation of the area of delhi uh, because they are encouraging the stakeholders namely the indigenous people of delhi to write their uh, traditional knowledge system say for example on the religious uh, uh, what we call the sacred uh, grove deva sole as the monograph the monograph by giving uh, financial support funding support also uh, to uh, throw uh, medicinal monograph have been uh, in brought out by keystone by engaging uh, irula of of the tribal communities of nilgiri and the other one is the alu kurumba two excellent ethno medicinal documentation was carried out along with the botanical identification carries the uh, botanical name also genus and species so the international community will recognize the particular medicinal plant so it has been uh, both these works have been uh, published with uh, in tamil orthography that is tamil script but in their own language a language is uh, their own native language indigenous language but it is written in tamil script printed in tamil script so in such a way we could uh, we could uh, have an excellent rapport with the indigenous stakeholders and uh, our ethnography collection ethnography study uh, will be definitely uh, easy quite easy job thank you the next question is uh, can you please share your views on digitalization of museum artifacts oh, excellent excellent uh, i have missed this point also uh, e documentation is one of the recent 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 uh, as i told you the, we are having five to seven important functions of museum documentation is one of the functions important function under the documentation we are having just starting with the indexing what we in this card and the catalog cataloging then preparing and publishing monographs uh, coffee table book these are publications on after uh, challenging uh, options documentation the present in the digital uh, age uh, we are also engaging ourselves in digital e in e documentation or digital documentation uh, during uh, 2000 the national museum under the, the 
funding of uh, MHRD, Department of Culture, uh, they, uh, the National Museum has uh, proposed a, a project called uh, National Registration of uh, Antiquities. That is uh, abbreviated as Natraj, N A T R A J, Natraj, uh, logo of Dancing Shiva. Uh, uh, under the Natraj uh, accessioning, uh, we have been uh, identified uh, different categories of uh, antiquities in the collection, maybe biological or anthropological, chronical, geological, uh, archaeological, or art uh, antiquities. Uh, they, the, Simple antiquity will, will be named as uh, A category, and the uh, more in, more important and rare item is uh, relative sense as a double A category, and the rarest uh, antiquities are named as double A category. So A category, double A category, double A categories. Uh, we have been assigned to categorize the collections and uh, make a documentation. And it was going on for uh, quite a long time. Uh, uh, likewise, uh, previously we were involving in manual maintenance of the access register. Access register is nothing but uh, uh, entry register of the various items that we are uh, acquiring from the field. Decision or is the collection. After collecting the items, it will be entered in the register concerned. It is called access register. Accessioning will be done uh, manually. Now we are having digital access register. So even the, uh, uh, the registrars are getting uh, uh, acidity with the aging of the paper. Uh, we can rely on the uh, digital access to register so that it can be uh, in, put it in portal uh, and uh, it is uh, it may be available to a number of uh, uh, cultural institutions. Uh, like that uh, e-documentation is the uh, peak in the documentation. And uh, under this, uh, uh, we are uh, not only doing uh, audio documentation, video documentation, photographic documentation, we are doing all sorts of digital documentation. That is the thing. And uh, one more dimension is that uh, under the evolution of uh, museum or museum movement, I have forgotten to say one more point that is the uh, virtual museum. It's just like uh, now I am sitting in Coimbatore and delivering a lecture uh, to the uh, members of Aspire, like that uh, by sitting in our uh, own uh, cabinet or uh, room or our public domain, we can access the museum, uh, any museum around the globe. That is called virtual museum. So each museum is expected to make a virtual image of their collections and uh, uh, we can make a virtual tour of by, by observing the uh, documented, in e-documented uh, uploaded a uh, video image like that. Even uh, we are having, even in the public display, we are having uh, 3D holographic uh, presentation, of, presentation of the object. Actually, the antiquities, they won't speak to the exhibits, they won't speak to the uh, audience or the visitors. So the curator itself should make the exhibit in an effective manner so that uh, the mute objects are interacting with the public, just the public. In such a way, uh, we can, we are now concentrating on virtual museum on the whole and e-documentation, one of the parts. Thank you. This is the importance of uh, question number. <laughs> and the last question we will take that, how museums help in building of global unity? Uh, as I told you that, uh, the, the, here, uh, uh, motto of uh, uh, ICOM is the uh, Museums for Equality, and Diversity, and Inclusion. It goes without saying that uh, uh, actually, uh, you know very well that anthropology is a discipline uh, which says that uh, no human cultural group is superior or inferior. So that means all cultural groups are equal in everything. So by, by making culture, I mean gallery visits, by indulging in, by hearing the gallery talks and uh, such virtual tours by virtual museum or virtual presentation, people could see that 
feel is that uh, all are having their own cultural values. So I cannot uh, measure the cultural value of uh, my group, uh, I mean other group, with my own yardstick, cultural yardstick. Because the cultural value uh, may differ from one culture to another, but uh, it's the uh, cultural, cultural value. The cultural value should be glorified, it should be uh, I mean, respected. So uh, these messages should be passed by the museum, modern museum, if it is, if it is uh, uh, going in the right trajectory. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. And I guess we are done with all the questions. And it was really delighted to have you on Aspire. Thank you so much. Thank you for being, being the ghost, uh, host of uh, this session. And uh, I would like to thank once again the General Secretary Aspire for Amadha Thirulman and others who gave me this uh, rare privilege of uh, interacting with people. I hope that I have. Uh, I, uh, I, uh, have imparted some basic uh, ideas on museum and cultural heritage, cultural heritage management. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I end this session here only, and uh, feedback forms will be sent to you on mail after the at at the last day of the workshop. Thank you, sir, and thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for bearing with us. Uh, some technical glitches were there, but uh, thank you so much. So I end the meeting here. Thank you.